Hey, welcome back. So I decided to make another video because I learned a really, really cool thing last night. Uh, I was thinking about these doors that I demonstrated in a couple of the videos that I made. Um, this one here that's activated by a siren, where you use this and and gate, the not and gate, where if both of these sources, the generator and the siren, are powered, it will disconnect power to the door which will shut the door which is great if your settlement is being attacked a settler comes up they flip this on it generates power which breaks the logic of this circuit and it shuts the power and keeps the uh, raiders on the outside keeps the settlers on the inside and everybody is safe uh, really cool setup really simple there's people that have got YouTube videos on it so if you don't know how to do this it's really easy I kind of demonstrated it in the video I made for, uh, what was it, oh, the Taffington Boathouse and the other one, so, yeah, one of those ones I made yesterday, not the big one about the, uh, about the Church of the Holy Living Tree, but the other one, I, I showed an example of this, another example that I did in the Church of the Holy Living Tree video is this powered one here, where you've got this powered door and you've got an outside switch here, and this panel here we're simulating is on an inside wall so you have an inside switch and an outside switch where you're using this XOR gate that will only transmit power if only one of these switches is on so if both of them are on doesn't meet the requirements no power if both of these are off doesn't meet the requirements no power if one of these is on and the other is off for example if I'm outside my building and I want to get in, I flip that switch, one is on, one is off, meets requirements, door is powered and it opens. So let's say I enter the building, go to my inside switch, turn that, both of them now are both off, doesn't meet the logic requirements, door shuts. And so I want to go back outside, turn that on, again, one is on, one is off, and from the outside I can do that and shut the door again. Let's say I have another secret entrance and I go back inside. So I sneak back inside my building and I say, hey, I don't want to go back out the front door, go to my inside. So I can do it any combination, it doesn't matter. As long as only one of these is lit, the door will open. So these are some really cool arrangements and they're fairly simple, fairly easy to make and I'm sure there's lots of videos on YouTube of people that have done stuff like this. And I was thinking about with, you know, with these powered doors and these logic circuits, I was wondering if there was a way you can actually make like a, a lock, a combination lock. Now, I did do a, well, after I came up with my plan and my design, I did do a Google search and a YouTube search to see if anybody had come up with a, a similar design or a similar idea. And the only thing that was found was were some trials where people had used these counters to make a type of combination lock where you pulse power through these and the number of times you pulse power it counts. And it, it, it kind of works, but it's really complicated and involves a lot of wiring. And if you screw up you know, one little wire somewhere, it's really hard to figure out which one you messed up because there's such a tangle of wires. It, it does work really well because you have to put the numbers in the right order and so that makes a really good combination but again it's a major hassle really complicated and um, doesn't really look nice and neat one of the things I'm gonna try after I get done with this is to see if there's a way to do this neater and cleaner and nicer looking but for now I'm gonna show you my solution which is this obviously here we've got these switches that are uh, they have corresponding numbers to them for the combination. You've got the power door and you have this nice clean arrangement where all the guts and everything is hidden behind this little room here. So let's see, does it work? Well, I'm going to be making a video if it didn't work. So let's see. Let's say I want to try a combination of one, two, three. Nope, wrong combination, doesn't open the door. Okay, what if I want to do a combination of one, four, six? Still doesn't work, doesn't open the door. 
Alright, now I'm getting frustrated, so I'm just going to turn everything on see what that does. Okay, all the switches are on. Still does not work. Okay, so... I want to put it in the right combination now so you can see that this will work only with the correct combination. What happened to my power with those lights? Oh, see that's one of the things I've been having a little bit of issue with is the the conduits with their radiant power things uh, they don't always really work very well and I'm having issues getting these to light and stay lit. Either way, okay, those are not important. But what's important is these switches and the way they work. So if these kind of go on and off and in and out, uh, that's that's a minor technical glitch thing. That's that's not really terribly important. It's not going to stop this from functioning. It's just not going to make it look as nice and neat. So the real combination is going to be one, three. Oh, now look at them, and six. So with one, three, and six lit, and the other ones off, the door opens. So now I can go through, and on the inside door, I've got this terminal here. I access the terminal. And turn all switches off. I reset everything. And that closes the door. Not only does it close, but because I reset it. Yeah, it's got to have something to do with, do with power to one of these switches. I'm not sure what the deal is. I'll have to figure that out later. Um, because I reset the, the switches, they're all back to the off position. So now nobody can come up later and say, oh, I can see which ones were lit, so now I know what the combination is. Nope. You plug in the combination, go inside, go to the terminal, reset everything, and it relocks it all and resets it back to zero. So, pretty cool. Uh, at least it would be if I could get these stupid things to light up, but they're not. Alright. Anyway, I'll worry about that later. Well, so, uh, yeah, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to arrange this, how to make this. Really, it's actually really simple. I mean, I'm sure some people are like, oh, that's so complicated. It's not. I figured it out in like 10, maybe 15 minutes, and I am not a programming computer engineer genius at all. So it, it just took a little bit of thinking, a little bit of common sense, and I'm sure you can do it too. All right, so if you're ready, hang on, and we'll get ready to go. Okay, so to get started, uh, a couple of first things first. Um, one, you really need to make sure you do some pre-planning. Know where you want things to be arranged because it's going to make a difference on how you set up your power and how you arrange the wiring, the, w the way you move these walls and those sorts of things. So you, you kind of already have to have a plan in mind about how you want this to look, what direction the power is going to come from, where this number pad wall is supposed to be, those sorts of things. So I'm going to start with, I've already got my door. Once you know your door location, put your door in place and don't move it. Leave it there. You're not going to move it at all throughout this entire build. Okay. Um, the second thing is your power. You need to know what direction your power is going to be coming from. And you really want it to come from behind the gate, the, the door here. I want to come from kind of like the inside. Now, because I know I'm going to be using this box as like my circuit room with all the wiring and the circuitry and everything, I'm going to use this pass-through. And I want the terminal over here. So as I walk through the door, the terminal is right there for me to reset everything. So I want this facing where the terminal is going to be. So I put it here on the side facing out like this way. So I'm going to put the terminal in and I can go ahead and do that now. That's not going to be a big deal. If I can remember where I find the terminal. Because, you know, there's so many things in here that doesn't always make sense. So I'm going to put the terminal there and I can go ahead and connect those two things. It's not a big deal. Connect. There you go. Connect. Okay, so I've, I've got the terminal, and it's powered, it's blinking, connected to the pass-through, and here's my door. So this is the base of beginning setup. Oh, I don't want you here, you're going to be in the way. The other thing you want to have is your number pad wall. And the easiest thing to do is just have these regular plain switches, 
and then some numbers attached to them. And I've used the neon ones. You can use, there's the stencils if you want to use the stencils, but they're kind of small to use, that sort of thing. It, it, this just looks really nice. So take a wall, put some switches on there, put some numbers beside them, and that's that. So now you've got your wall set up. You're also going to need, if you want to have it set up like I did with the secret room, you're going to need three walls to go around it. Uh, and I use also this little half wall from the shack walls. That's going to come into play for where I put the logic gates. And the reason I'm using this little smaller piece is, as I'm going to show you, it's because it's smaller, it's going to be able to fit in here without interfering with wall sizes and clipping issues and object collision with floors and ceilings and walls and things like that. Um, so you could use one of these walls as a place to put the uh, logic boxes, but that just kind of adds a little bit of complexity to the wiring and how you have to maneuver things to get the wires to pass through walls and all those other different stuff. I, I just like this one. It's a little bit easier to use because I, I can move this around a lot more easily than I can those big ones. Okay, so what we want to do now is we need to connect each of these switches directly to power. Okay, so real simple. I've got my conduit power here. So I'm going to go to my conduit and I'm going to... Where did it go? There it is. I'm going to put a little wired junction point. And so I'm just going to connect each of these to power. To power. And there we go. So now all my switches are powered. You can see they've got the little red lights on, which means they're powered and in the off position. Now, the next part, I'm going to just go ahead and do this because I do want to have those neon lights lit up. So I'm going to put, I want to do that one. Menu. There. So I want to put one of these radiant things to radiate energy for those neon. And if everything is working right, yep, they should have power, they should be on. It's kind of hard to tell because it's daylight right now, but they're showing the green energy lightning bolt, so they should be lit. Okay, so, and here's one of the things, you're saying, well, why do you have this facing backwards? Should it be facing the other way? Um, ultimately, yes. But for right now, in order to do the wiring and to keep the wiring back here hidden, I need to do the wiring this way first. Later on, what's going to happen is I'm going to take the wall and it'll automatically snap and turn around like this. And the wires will just magically pass through the wall and it won't be seen. But for now, I don't want to do that because I have one more crucial step that's going to involve here. So for this part, I'm going to use these logic gates, these advanced switches that they have. So in order for this to work, in order to make your combination work, the, the easiest thing to do, which is the solution I found, was to put an AND gate here and say, okay, well, in order for this combination to work, the right numbers have to be, all the right numbers have to be powered on. So that's what the AND gate does. This will only turn on if every single one that's connected to it is also turned on. So let's say I want to have a combination of four, um, two, and six. Two, four, six. Okay. So I've got two, four, six that are attached to this. Now, I could, if I wanted to, directly connect this to the door. And let's go ahead and try that. Directly connect that to the door. Okay. So I've got this directly connected to the door. And I could go over here and I can say, okay, well, I want to do, if I do the combination of 2, 4, 
six. Hey, that worked. So I'm done, right? Well, no, because here's the thing. What if I also happen to flip one and five and three? Well, I don't have the right combination anymore because I have all of them selected. But yet this, because it's only reading the three of the combination, it doesn't care about any of the others. So it doesn't care that I have other numbers selected that are wrong. It's just caring about these three. So this by itself is not enough. So what I need to do then is I need to put in another condition where not only do I have the right numbers in the on position, but I also need a switch that checks the wrong numbers. I need a switch that checks to see if the wrong numbers are on or off that also is a good condition so I really need two conditions for this to work not only do you need the right numbers to be on but I also need the wrong numbers to be off when both of those conditions are met that means that only the right combination will work because any other mix-up will be either the wrong numbers are turned on and so that doesn't work or not all the right numbers are turned on so that one doesn't work you have to have both conditions so I'm going to need another switch for the off ones and I'm going to need a switch that transmits power not if all inputs have power or unless I want one that transmits power when no inputs have power so this means that if the wrong ones are off this will transmit power and it will say everything is good so okay what were my wrong ones well my wrong ones were one so I'm gonna connect one to the input three so I'm gonna connect three and five come here five Okay, so I've got one, three, and five are now connected to the, these are the NOR logic. These are, if they're on, they're wrong. If they're off, then they're good. Okay, so let's test that. So I want one needs to be off. Five needs to be off. And three needs to be off. And we can see that worked. The the three that are not part of the combination, when all three of those are off, that means the right logic. This is now green, showing that it's going to have power. Okay, so now how do I connect it to the door? Do I just connect both of these directly? Well, no, because you, you have to have both of these at the same time working. So in order for us to do that, I'm going to need a third logic gate. And this is going to be another AND. So basically what I'm saying is, if the right numbers are on and the wrong numbers are off, then we will transmit power to the gate. So I'm going to need these three gates hooked up this way. The right numbers go to an AND gate. The wrong combination numbers go to a NOR gate, and both of these connect to a third AND gate, which then will connect to the actual gate. So because I have the right ones on and the right ones off, both of these are transmitting power, which goes to the AND gate, which checks, yep, both conditions are met, power goes to the door, the door opens. So. It, it looks really complicated, I know. It's like, oh my gosh, it's a mess of wires. But if you think about it piece by piece, it's real simple. First of all, these are just power wires. They, they don't have anything. You have to have power running to them, so that's an easy one to understand. You have to have power running to each of the switches. So, yeah, it makes a mess, but you understand it. Here, it's really, really simple again. One AND gate for all the numbers that are right for the combination. A NOR gate for all the numbers that are wrong for the combination. And another AND gate 
to connect both of these. Now, if you really want to get complicated, you can put a whole bunch more numbers on here. You can go up to 9 or 12 or whatever, or how big you make it as complicated as you want to. The principle is still going to be the same. You're still only going to use these three gates and all the numbers that are part of the combination connect to this one. All the numbers that are not part of the combination must connect to this one. And then these two will connect back to this, which connects the door, and everything is good. All right. So, really, that's it. So now all we have to do is put everything in place, make the little room, and we're done. So now I'm going to do that funky thing. I don't want this wiring to be showing. I want it looking nice and neat, which is why I put this power and connector stuff back here. Because I want this wall to face the other way. Face the other way. Oh, I can't because of this is in the way, which is why I like using this little thing because I can move it around fairly easily. Come on, get out of there. There we go. All right. And it doesn't really get in the way of stuff. All right. No, nope, I don't want you making right angles. I want you. There we go. All right. So now all the wires are now being pulled back through the wall and it looks nice and neat. my little circuit board wall. I'm just going to stick you right here. Come on, jump over. So all of my wiring is being pulled through the wall. It's coming right here. It's all going to be hidden in this little tiny section right here that's going to be walled off and won't be seen. And it'll look all nice and neat. And everything's all nice and lit up too. Okay, so now I'm going to take these sections that I had already pre-made and set aside. And I'm just going to wall this thing off. This one here is the hardest one because it wants to, you have to put it in just the right way. And if you don't, it doesn't like it. Alright, I'm going to put that there. I'm going to see what's wrong. We have to have, I have something in the way. That should work. Let me move this out a little bit more just to make sure it's not in the way. And it's a real finicky placement. Not sure why, but it is. You have to have it turned the right way. And... Alright, so what's getting in the way here? Something is getting in the way. didn't get in the way before. Alright, well, I want to pause and figure out what's going on and continue again when I figure out what the dilemma is and why this isn't working right. Alright, hold on a second. Okay, so I figured out what the problem was. Um, with this board here, the wire that comes from this up to this gate, the uh, original position I had it in, which was right here, It led this wire to cut across and that created a collision issue with this wall. It didn't like it. So what I did was I moved this over here so that it changed the angle. So now it's a little bit off. It's not cutting through that same space. And now I can take this wall and boom, snaps right in. Now if I want to, I can take this and I can move it back to that position. It doesn't really matter. You can. I mean, it's going to be hidden anyways, but... And then, back it goes. Oops, yeah, my terminal. I had gotten rid of the terminal because I thought that was in the way somewhere, but it wasn't. So now I need to go get my terminal again, put that back on. And there we go. Just like that. So if I go to my terminal, and I say terminal, switch control, turn all switches off. Alright, so here's my combination, and I, uh, jeez, again, that's stupid. Yeah, those radiant energy things, they have issues. You have to fiddle with them to make sure everything's just perfect, but either way. Okay, so here we are, combination lock. 
a combination we said. Well, again, let's try it. Just make sure. Let's do one, two, three. Nope, doesn't work. Let's try. Um, what was it? Let's do five, three, and one. Now, the only thing about this arrangement that is kind of a, a disappointment, the order of the numbers that you select doesn't make a difference. It only counts if you have the right number. So I can do one, five, three, three, five, one, five, three, one, whatever. The order doesn't matter. Whatever the combination is, if those were the right numbers, the order that I turn them on is irrelevant. Okay, but that's not working, so that's not the right combination. Okay, so let me go again, have a temper tantrum, turn everything on, and see if that works. Nope. Alright, so let me go back to the real combination, and I'm going to turn off the odd numbers so that my even numbers 2, 4, and 6 are lit, and that's the right combination that are on, the right combination that are off, and so that works. And so that's how you make a combination lock. Oh, there's the light get back on. Jeez. That's how you make a combination lock. Um, it, it is actually really, really simple. I know the, the wiring back there looks kind of complicated, but when you understand the basic concept of it, it it's actually really, really simple. Um, so just to review, basic idea, first thing, make sure you've got your door in place first. Know where that's going to be. Don't move it. Have your power set up first. Know which direction you want your power to come in. And again, from the side like this is probably the best, the most convenient, because it lets you set up this terminal here to connect to those switches so you can reset them. And the, the really complicated thing, I wouldn't even call it complicated, is just setting up that switchboard. And again, the, the basic concept is really simple. All the right numbers connect to this AND box. All the wrong numbers connect to this NOR box. And then both of these connect to this AND box, which then connects directly to the gate. Uh, really, really, really simple once you understand that basic concept. So, yep, that's how you make a combination lock for a door, guys. I uh, hope you enjoy and have a good day.